All right, let's go over fibromatosis coli. So fibromatosis coli is an infantile pediatric disease. It's present in babies and infants. Now, most of these infants are gonna to present to the ultrasound department with torticollis. Now, we need to differentiate torticollis from fibromatosis coli. Fibromatosis coli is a disease that can cause torticollis, but you can have torticollis without any fibromatosis coli. Torticollis can be caused by many things like spinal conditions, muscle spasm, and often the ultrasound is gonna appear normal. Now, fibromatosis coli is a tumorous overgrowth of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which is this muscle right here. This long muscle that separates the anterior and posterior triangles of the neck. So since this is MSK, you're going to want to use a linear transducer. 15 megahertz and up is going to be great. Now the 15 megahertz transducer is quite big and doesn't allow for scanning of that space in a baby. If you can get them to stretch their neck, you can get it in. But if you have a hockey stick probe or the very high megahertz transducer probe, use that. You're going to have much better imaging. You're going to want to take longitudinal and transverse images of both sternocleidomastoid muscles, and you're also gonna to wanna to do dual imaging to compare both sides. The normal sternocleidomastoid muscle is gonna be very thin and linear, especially in infants. And if, there's a, and if there's a tumor or a fibromatosis coli, you're gonna see the tumor taper out and then back in. There's gonna be a bulge. And there's also gonna be heterogeneous echotexture in the muscle. All right, so fibromatosis coli, benign tumorous overgrowth of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, it's benign, so non-cancerous. It will not metastasize anywhere else in the body. Use a linear transducer. Take longitudinal dual screen images. And also don't forget to take transverse images and also do dual screen images in transverse. All right, I hope you found this useful. Take care, bye.